I'm Chance. And I'm Sarah Catherine. And this is Conservation Connection. Presented by Last Chance Endeavors. We are a husband and wife team running a wildlife education nonprofit. It's focused on connecting students to their environment. Each week, here on Conservation Connection, we do just that. Introducing you to the groundbreaking science and conservation work that's happening every day across the globe. We talk to professionals in the world of conservation science and wildlife management, and we ask them about their career, their current projects, their wild and crazy stories from the field, and everything in between. This episode is a collaboration with EarthX here in Dallas, Texas. EarthX is the largest Earth Day celebration in the world, and it brings in speakers from every corner of the environmental arena. Listen in to hear the stories of today's environmental titans, covering everything from environmental law, ocean health, renewable energy, clean transportation, and so much more. Let's get to the show. Alrighty guys, welcome to another episode of Conservation Connection. We're so excited to be sitting here in Dallas, Texas for EarthX 2022 in the EarthX podcast studio. And if I haven't said EarthX enough today, we are very excited to be sitting down with Dan Russell, who is the EVP of content and strategy for EarthX TV, which is not something that we've gotten to talk about here on the podcast. But obviously you guys are a big supporter of amplifying your impact through media. That's why we're out here podcasting the stories that you're showcasing at EarthX event. Uh, so I'm very excited to talk a little bit more about EarthX TV. <laughs> and with that, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> so before we get too far into EarthX TV, I think you're a great person to give us a background on what is EarthX? Why did it start? Why are we here? We know why we're here, but you tell our audience. <laughs> sure. EarthX, uh, actually, it started by our founder, Trammell Crow about 12 years ago here in Dallas. He uh, very committed to the conservation and environment areas. And he, uh, he created an on-the-ground Earth Day event called Earth Day Texas that started in five blocks in the Arts District and expanded across the years to become, if not the biggest, one of the biggest on-the-ground Earth Day uh, attended events in the world. And when pandemic hit, well, I wasn't here yet, but they were poised to have the biggest event uh, to date. And of course, the pandemic just crushed that. But the people at EarthX were very savvy and they started setting up a virtual event. And they did a lot of panel discussions, a lot of Zoom meetings with just amazing, qualified and uh, influential people in, in the various fields of, of the environment. And lo and behold, uh, got really good coverage, a lot of good pickup, a lot of people watching and listening. So that really piqued the interest of, of EarthX to say, you know, maybe this is something we can take even further if we consider, you know, broadening into a, a channel concept. Yeah. Well, there was so much desire for content, especially then, like as COVID hit, it's like, all right, what, what do I do? Can I like learn anything? What, what can I do to fill my time? <laughs> And it's kind of amazing to me that an event as large as EarthX was able to pivot so quickly from having Fair Park in Dallas, right. which is a massive event space. I mean, it's literally buildings and buildings and buildings with outdoor spaces. And to pivot from that into, all right, well, we're going to do it virtually. We have this message to tell and we're committed to it. Well, we're not we're not just canceling it and saying, everybody go home. We're going to turn around and we're going to find ways to do virtual conferences. We're going to find ways to still get the stories that our attendees and our speakers have to tell into the hands and into the ears of the people that need to hear them. And that kind of turned into EarthX TV a little bit, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And to Trammell's credit, he saw that there was an opportunity. He, you know, that was just, we were just scratching the surface. So, so he brought in uh, Michael Fletcher, who's our CEO right now, to really analyze the possibility of, you know, growing and developing a channel that we can distribute worldwide. And my good fortune was, as Michael Fletcher said, we need to bring in a, a proven programmer who has worked in the nonfiction world with channels that have brands associated to them, like important missions, but someone who can come in and create a real commercial channel that has a lot of entertainment value. It can't be a didactic channel where you're finger wagging and things like that. So um, I got the opportunity to come in and join the team about eight months ago. In the last eight months, I've been 
spanning the, the globe, finding some great first run acquisitions from other countries, and then also developing a handful of really great original content. So that's an excellent uh, segue for us, because I, I want to get into the content that's happening. But before we get there, I want to know a little bit more about how you came to be the guy that they said, hey, we need a proven track record guy who can make this happen. So what was kind of your journey from the start of your career to here at EarthX TV? Well, it's great. It's a great question. I was at Discovery Networks for just over 20 years. And through my, my time there, I grew throughout the ranks of uh, the channel management and programming area. I was with Discovery when it was just Discovery Channel. And then when Discovery bought TLC, I joined that team. And, and then when we launched Animal Planet, I got to move there. And I, I really got a chance to really own the, um, the schedule and what goes on there, you know, like what we acquire, what we produce, and where it goes in the schedule. And I was very fortunate to find Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter, which just put Animal Planet on the map. He was the face and voice of the channel for years. Well, let me just interject because I grew up and chanced it as well, watching Animal Planet. And that like developed who I am as a person. And like every morning before I went to school, like that's what would be on the TV, like while I was eating my breakfast. So thank you for finding all of those wonderful shows. <laughs> you are so welcome. And I, I just want to say that Steve Irwin off screen was exactly what you saw on screen. He was the most real and sincere person I know, uh, especially when it came to his, uh, his love for the environment, love for animals, and, and his desire to want to be a warrior for it. Yeah. So all of this makes it absolute sense that when Channel Crow was looking for somebody to help curate this content for EarthX TV, that you would be the guy that he's looking for. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, yeah, my last two years were at Curiosity Stream. And cool. so lots of environmentally positive shows there. And also the fact that I was working, helping distribute the channel around the globe. So it was just a natural fit. As you can tell, my background has been with startups or rebrands and making small channels look 10 times bigger than they are until they get 10 times bigger than they are. Yes. <laughs> and I love being the underdog and, and growing and creating value with these brands. So it's, this is a great challenge, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, so I was going to ask why you said yes to joining EarthX TV, but it sounds like it's because it's a challenge and you're excited to be part of a challenge. It is. Uh, I will say that I love the idea of being tied to a channel that's working very hard to educate and bring diverse ideas on how to save the planet together. And, um, you know, it's a legacy thing for me. I have several kids and they're proud of their dad for being here, you know, and I've got kids that are working in the conservation space. So it's like, we've never bonded more than we have right now. It's pretty awesome. That's really What cool. more could you ask as a dad to have kids that are proud of you, you know? Finally, they're finally <laughs> proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really cool showcase again. And you're probably going to hear me say this on basically every episode that we're doing here at EarthX, but it's a really cool showcase of how you can take your skill set, which is in content curation and, and working in the mass media field and use it for the planet, use it for the service of other people and for this environment to make it a better place. I love that. You know, the big challenge is for us is uh, we're working on distribution, you know, to getting around We're we're really close to getting some deals uh, in the traditional cable and satellite space and also in a lot of the big streaming spaces. Uh, for now, our channel can be seen by anybody at earthxtv.com. I will just say that once we get on the bigger platforms, uh, the channel will be supersized and we'll have uh, some content that will rival anything that you see on Discovery or History or National Geographic. I really see that as our competitive set. And that is a big challenge. I mean, I can't believe I'm putting it out there <laughs> yes. know, on the record. but We're going to hold you to it. <laughs> but I absolutely feel if anybody has the chops to sort of break into that space right now in the current climate of, of conservation media and, and environmental media, I absolutely believe that EarthX has the ability and the passion and the savvy to do it. We do. And even with all of these new things like, you know, this channel that's going to go around the world and, and a new film festival that's being broken out on its own. The jewel and the reason why you know we exist is for this Earth X event on Earth Day. It's huge. We're so thrilled that it's back in person. So are we. Yes. Let me tell you. Yeah, exactly. And um, my dream 
and I can't speak for others, but my dream is that it expands from not just Dallas, but multiple cities around the country and, and around the world. So there's still a lot of upside for that as well. I cannot wait for the day when there's EarthX Dallas and EarthX Los Angeles and EarthX New York, just all over the country and then all over the world as well. EarthX everywhere. Tell us a little bit about the future of EarthX TV. What can we expect to see on it? I know you have a lot of content planned. And how do you see this? Well, I guess you already kind of mentioned, like, you see it growing EarthX and, like, putting it all over the world. But are there other ways that you see it growing EarthX? More content you expect to see? What is your vision for, like, five, ten years down the road? I will say that, you know, the goal for EarthX... TV in terms of growth. We are a nonprofit, but this will be a commercial channel. But the point that needs to be made is that the revenue that's generated is funneled straight back to EarthX. And all of the fundamental educational programs and impact programs that EarthX participates in. I mean, the whole reason that EarthX exists is to have this impact, right? And all of these resources the profits from this TV channel are going to go right back into that. Absolutely. It's going to, first of all, we're into sustainability. It's going to help make EarthX be self-sustaining. Above that, we're going to build what we consider uh, should be a tremendous endowment that will allow this organization to do a lot of good in many ways for many years to come. For a very long time. And that's always the goal. Yeah. In order to do that, we have to have a channel that people will watch and enjoy (laughs) and stick with. So I'll give you some of the things that you can look forward to seeing coming down the pike. Yes, please. My background is nonfiction television, and I've got a good line on what genres and formats and television devices work for audiences that are into nonfiction television. So they have to be things uh, that relate to the environment, relate to sustainability, relate to conservation, Uh, varying degrees of intensity or rigor, B story versus A story. But you can look forward to seeing great science tech innovation series that look at the next generation of how science and engineering is going to help solve a lot of problems. Extreme weather. I mean, I call it weather porn because (laughs) extreme weather is directly related to climate change and things like that. And first person accounts of some of these just very extreme events it's great television, it's very entertaining, but it's also a great way to really get across the, the drama and the impact that it's having on people all over the world. Um, animal Rescue, we have our Animal Heroes Night, where we've got all of these great, brave, and talented people that are in Africa and India and all around the world that you know, are giving their time and their energy and their careers to protecting endangered animals, uh, helping relocate them, help getting their, their numbers back up dealing with poachers. You know, so those type of shows, you introduce the whole concept of danger and unpredictable outcomes and twists and turns you weren't expecting, and that's good television as well. There's going to be a lot of lifestyle. Food is a big thing. So we're going to introduce some personalities that we think will stand out in the various food areas. Travel, eco-travel, adventure. Uh, again, you need characters but we have some great things that are going to come in. Uh, One, I'll just mention, it's an acquisition, but it's something that I would have produced if it didn't exist. And it's called um, Leave No Trace. The host has a background in high-end luxury travel. And he said, you know, I've been doing this all my life, uh, but I know the, the carbon footprint has been huge. He goes, this series is going to be putting me to the challenge to have the exact same level of experience, high end travel luxury but doing it with little to no carbon footprint and that's amazing and, and, that's and it's fun and it is and, and you know he has a rigorous uh, criteria that he checks off and pulls it off in every episode it, and it's it just makes you happy and excited because you don't have to sacrifice something to have that experience you know you just have to be thoughtful and pre-plan yeah yeah you just got to put in a little bit of effort yeah. right absolutely exactly we're also uh we're going to have feature docs. You know, some of the stuff that I've mentioned, you know, isn't hardcore environmental, but it does have strong environmental messaging. But we will have our version of a movie night. Every Saturday night, we're going to have one or two feature docs that have made the film festival parade and have done really well. So it's going to be legitimate and hardcore, kind of like going to church, you know. And then Sundays is going to be events. We're going to be either stacking the best of our regular content, creating stunts. That's where we'll also have quarterly specials, or if we have theme weeks and stuff, it'll be kicking off there. So 
That's a lot. I mean, it's a 24 hour channel, right? So that's a, how many hours of content is that a week to fill? It's 168 hours. We, there's a healthy repeat factor. I'm not going to lie. We are a startup, <laughs> but I just look at it as an opportunity for people to catch it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. This has been a very different podcast. It's been a really fun episode to record so far. And there's been a question that I've been, it's just kind of been like flitting around the back of my mind while we've been sitting here. How often are you the one being interviewed? You're the one in front of the mic or in front of the camera, as opposed oh. to the one that's behind the camera making stuff happen. It's very rare for me. This is this is unusual. I'm just getting comfortable now with this one. <laughs> he was telling me before the show this is his first podcast. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Was this about what you expected it to be? Yeah, it's great. Well, first of all, you guys are so warm and easy to talk to. And, Thank you. Uh, and it's a subject that I love and I live 24-7, so that's made it easy. Yes, we can tell that you love it. Uh, just by the expression on your face this whole time, obviously our audience can't see it, but... He has clearly been happy. He's clearly excited about what's coming down the line. And so are we. I just love the fact that I'm doing something I love and it's actually going to make a difference in my mind. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and getting in front of the microphone for us instead of producing us from the back. Uh, we really loved having you on the show. Great. Well, we're going to talk about maybe getting you a show on the channel. OK, uh, uh, we would love that. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Conservation Connection. If you enjoyed our podcast, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you catch every episode that we post. We'd love to hear from you. So if you want to reach out, go to our website, lastchanceendeavors.com backslash contact and shoot us an email. We love questions from our listeners. So if you heard something that you want to know more about, be sure to let us know. If you've got a minute to spare, leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts will help other conservation-minded people find the show. We'd really appreciate it. A big thanks to the people working to protect our planet, and a big thanks to you for listening. Don't forget to tune in next week.